I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 29th of December 2022. It is Thursday and welcome to my vlog of daily life as a world traveler. Right now I'm in Houston, Texas. I will be here for just a couple more days before heading back briefly to Costa Rica, very, very briefly to Costa Rica and then on to Nicaragua where we will be uh, staying at least we think until April. That is the plan and then hopefully some interesting adventures to tell you about then. Today is pretty much a boring day as far as uh, particular topics, but the interesting thing today is that it is our day in the storage unit. Now, for those of you who do not know, we have been keeping in Texas, actually we've been keeping a storage unit for probably in excess of 12 years. We've had one for a very long time and it's something that we have found to be very valuable in general as people who travel extensively. You'll have to excuse a bit of my uh, jitterness on, jitteriness on the episode today. I have a bit of a cough. Uh, pretty sure I have bronchitis. Um, we will we will see tomorrow, but not feeling not feeling my best, and uh, so that's <laughs> that's affecting me a little bit. But even with the cough and everything, had to go deal with the storage unit today. So we've always had one, but now we've had one for a couple years here in Houston. Uh, we keep one because it's it's relatively near Dominica's family, and it's really near my cousin Jeremy, near the airport uh, at IAH uh, on the north side of the city. Uh, and we have we have a 10 by 10 unit and it is packed to the absolute roof. And for us moving abroad, uh, we use a storage unit so that we don't have to instantly put everything we've ever owned into into a shipping container and ship it with us somewhere. And I've done some discussions about shipping previously on the channel. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, of course, go look up those episodes. But um, I, I generally recommend lightening your load. Don't keep everything you've ever owned uh, and ship it just for the joy of shipping it. That's, I think, incredibly foolish. And I've, I've said that a lot. Uh, I've said it to many people directly. I've said it on the channel. Uh, however, for us, um, we have a, a number of factors as to why we have the storage unit. Um, one is that we do have a certain amount of risk because of the places we go that we may have to move again. So we want to be extremely sure that we know where we're going to be before we ship much of anything. Uh, the second thing is that uh, we have little children, and I mean, they're not that little, but we have younger children, and a lot of their lives are in storage. And we're not in a position where we can like throw out all their stuff and be like, you don't need all this stuff ever again in your lives. Uh, it just doesn't work that way, right? We anticipate being grandparents. They have a lot of memories in there. We have a lot of nostalgic things. So the items that we have that are intentionally stored are mostly... Uh, family memories, artwork, paintings, uh, things like that. Um, things that we, we really want to hang on to, if at all possible. Um, many of which are for the children. Lots and lots of their toys. Toys that we really hope to be able to have the grandchildren play with. Of course, it would be cheaper to buy them all again for the grandchildren, but uh, it is what it is, right? There's a nostalgic value that you, it's really hard to put a dollar value on. Um, I hope you can put a dollar value on it, and I hope it's in the tens of thousands of dollars because that's what it's gonna end up costing us, but it is what it is. I'm gonna turn the camera around a little bit just so you guys can see where I'm walking and the light's a little bit better this way. I know people like when I do neighborhood walks, so try to get at least a little bit. I'm walking very slowly because I'm under the weather, but I also need the exercise, so it's not that bad. I think this may be a turn going a direction I didn't want to go. Oh, I'm not great with these streets. So, um, uh, so the storage unit cost us quite a bit, but it gives us a lot of flexibility. The mistake that we made is we put a lot of things into storage years ago, uh, including a lot of furniture items and a lot of kitchen items and a lot of things that really we should have just assumed we were going to replace. And we did try to give away an awful lot. We tried to eliminate things that we just weren't going to use. And we eliminated a lot. I don't want to say we didn't because we put in a lot of effort and I think we did reasonably well. But at the end of the day, we still have an extremely large storage unit. And this is for multiple people. This is not just Dominican and I. It's not just the kids. Uh, Paul has his entire life in there as well. So it's five people, which makes it a bit more reasonable. But it is still extreme. There's no getting around the fact that it is an extreme amount of stuff in storage. Uh, a lot of that stuff went in at the very last minute because we didn't know what else to do. And many of the things, such as big pieces of furniture, we kept because at the time we were moving kind of blindly. Uh, moving to Nicaragua in 2021, early in the year, 
Paul moved there, essentially sight unseen. He had never lived in the country. And Dominica and I and the kids moved having only lived in Nicaragua briefly in 2015. There was a so many unknowns. We didn't know what our residency situation was going to be. We didn't know that the kids were gonna be happy with it. We just wanted to, to hedge our bets and throwing out or donating absolutely everything we owned with no ability to return to the United States felt reckless and probably was reckless and so we didn't do that so we made the decision to keep enough stuff in storage that if we decided to return to the united states we would be able to effectively function with what we had uh, of course we would need to replace some things but we'd be able to make do and keep living while we made other decisions and replace things Plus, we had to have the storage unit of some size for the nostalgia and artwork and those items. At this point, uh, having kept the storage unit now for a couple years, paying for it all that time, we do not have our residency yet, and we're unwilling to ship the stuff that we have down um, until we have residency. That just feels like a foolish move. Once we have residency, our plan at this point, and we made this decision today uh, because the whole storage unit thing was so extreme, and I'll explain that in a minute, uh, but we made the decision that we're going to, uh, we have to, have to build a well-secured, well-insulated bodega, a big, basically a big storage unit, basically our own private storage unit uh, that we will put in Nicaragua off of the beach. We cannot store our stuff on the beach, we know that. So we're gonna have a spot off from the beach where we're able to treat it as a storage unit, store a large amount of stuff there. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, find a low cost uh, shipper. It can take as long as people want. It can sit in uh, on a ship as long as it wants. It can go anywhere, we don't care because uh, we don't need any of the stuff that's in storage. We just don't want it to be lost. And we're gonna ship everything down to Nicaragua and put it into storage there where we have the ability to access it, catalog it, uh, get rid of what we shouldn't have, whatever. That means at some point we have to come up and load up a, a shipping crate and do that. So that's, that's on our list of things to do. So the question you will have is why? Scott, you've told us so many times not to ship stuff unless you really have to. What is driving us to make a different decision than we recommend for other people? Well, I am, I'm glad that you asked that. Let's talk about that. So here's our challenge. Our storage unit is absolutely full. We cannot go through it, right? So Dominic and I showed up and uh, we took out a whole bunch of the first layer uh, of, of the storage unit and I got video of it, right? I set up the, the GoPro and uh, filmed just a, a quick little uh, a time lapse so you can see us working in there. Um, but the moral of the story is for all the work that we did, it was probably a total of three to four hours of work. We had to drive out there with a car. We had to pull all this stuff out. We had to go through it. We got dirty. We got rained on at the end. We uh, put stuff into the car, made some decisions. And at the end of the day, we had to put so much back into the storage unit that you didn't see a dent at all. We didn't find anything that we really needed to take back with us. There are things we want. We did get one or two things that are a little bit more important, like a desktop, desktop, a tabletop fryer. We're gonna try setting that down by Nickabox just to, to check things out, do some, see if that kind of thing ships okay, uh, which I'll let you guys know about. Um, but overall, we took essentially nothing out. We threw essentially nothing away. A few things, I'm not saying it's not zero, but it's really close to zero. And when we put it back, we made no dent. If we were to do this process over and over again for the next 20 years, and I mean this, 20 years, we would not significantly make it through the storage unit and we would never get to the back wall. We would never get to that final row of, of things to start looking at. And there's things in there we want uh, all through it. That's why they're in there. But the problem is, is that they're mixed in with things we don't necessarily want or have no easy way to deal with. And you'll notice in the time lapse, there's big items we took out. And of course it's like, oh yeah, we could donate this. We could throw it away. Well, it's not like there's a, a dumpster there. So we've got to have a truck to haul that stuff away and throw it away. And then we're throwing away perfectly good stuff just because we, had, we can't move it. Like there's, none of it's good. So by the time we're done, the cost and time and requirements of dealing with any of it, we're pretty sure that actually the cheapest thing we can do 
while not throwing away our family heirlooms and, and, and artwork and the, the kids' memories, that's the most important stuff, to enable not throwing that stuff away, our cheapest path forward is going to be to, to put the whole thing onto a boat and ship it to Nicaragua. Because then we can take our time, go through it all, and get the maximum use out of what we have. It's because there, for example, there are really good office desks in there and they go back to the 1990s. These are the ones that I bought when I was starting the company in the 90s. And they're still perfectly good today for the most part, as long as the storage hasn't damaged them. And I know shipping and storage has damaged a few of them, but there's a lot in there. There are bed frames, there are mattresses, there are guitars, there are bins and bins and bins of toys that are sealed plastic and are still good. There's thousands and thousands of dollars of Legos. There's computers, there's computer parts, there's chairs, there's uh, lawn appliances like, like leaf blowers and weed whackers. There's just ladders and, and huge toolboxes and all kinds of useful things. If we had them in Nicaragua, their value wouldn't be zero. They're not worth shipping just for the sake of shipping. That makes no sense at all. But if we, if we, because they're already in storage, because they're blocking things that we need, sending them down actually becomes, it seems, the cheapest option. If we had someone who was willing to come up and work basically for free, going through our storage unit, for weeks, taking pictures of everything, going through everything for us, cataloging it, doing a live video. Yeah, yeah, we could clean it out. But that, again, if you were actually gonna do it, no one would do that, right? And they shouldn't, it would be stupid. It would cost 10, 20, $30,000 of someone's time to do that because it would take forever and they'd have to deal with disposal. And then there would still be things we wanna ship and we'd find a way and it wouldn't be nearly as expensive as, as getting a shipping container, but we'd still have these challenges. So, for us, because we're in the situation where we have so much stuff blocking things we need, and because we've already moved away years ago, uh, we and the storage unit costs money every month, right? Long ago, I used to have a storage unit at my dad's farm. That was free. So having that for year after year after year kept our stuff safe and allowed us not to be bleeding out on it. So it was a great decision to keep all that stuff. Now we pay monthly, and it's not impossible to pay, but it's a lot of money. And the reality is, is that if we can eliminate that cost, and this is a big deal, if we can eliminate the cost of the storage unit, it pays for the shipping in somewhere between three to eight years. That's a lot, but it does pay for itself eventually. And the sooner we can stop that, the sooner we start recuperating that cost. So that's where we are with that. And I know it sounds like a crazy decision, um, but it seems like it's the only one that makes sense. We will never have enough time in the United States, uh, and it's so far away and so hard to deal with, that for us to go up there, and, and this is big, it needs Dominica and Paul and I there at the same time to make any kind of reasonable decisions about which things get taken out, which things don't, because everything's like, well, this is Scott's nostalgic piece of furniture. This is Dominica's nostalgic uh, artwork. This is Paul's uh, tool set. And like each thing, if all of us are there, we're like, ah, just throw it away. Ah, it's in the way, get rid of it. Ah, I need that. Put it in, put it on our, in our luggage. We're gonna take it right now. That stuff becomes easy, but if we're not all there, we have to take the other people's stuff, set it aside and know we're gonna put it back and we make no progress. So there's just so many logistical challenges to going through the storage unit as it is that we have to write it off and say, we don't wanna throw it away, so we're gonna ship the whole thing. That's where we are, and I think it makes sense. If you have other ideas, let me know. Put it down in the comments. Uh, what are you thinking about for shipping? Let's have some shipping discussions, because uh, I wanna know what people are doing, what you've found, what your experiences have been, what you're thinking about doing, what you're planning on, and uh, why you wanna keep things and don't, because um, you know, I can say we made some bad decisions, but I think we made them for, for decently logical reasons. In hindsight, we would do things differently, but we didn't have a lot of that information at the time. And uh, now we need to figure out the, the bodega situation in Nicaragua. That will, be, that will be pretty easy. And it's still, we're not going to do it until we have residency. So it's, it's not an immediate thing, but it's, it's a soon thing. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. You've already done your comments. If you'd like to buy me a coffee and help pay for that experience, expensive storage unit and shipping that I need to deal with, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That goes directly to me. Helps a lot with the channel. And as always, share on social media. Tell your friends. Get on a plane. Come visit Nicaragua. It is 2023 coming up soon. Start checking out those flights. There are flights in, and uh, we're going to talk about that in just a couple days. But it is time. It is time for you all to come visit. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all tomorrow.